Today we're taking a look at how this engine went from a pile of junk to a restored engine today on Austin's American Flyer YouTube. You don't want to miss it. Between 1950 and 1951, Gilbert American Flyer produced an interesting set, a uh, train set, to be specific. Uh, and to be specific, it had a Pacific, a Pacific in a red shell, a, a streamlined red shell to be exact, and it had the words circus engine on the side, and it was a departure from what Flyer usually did. In addition to the red engine that was metal, and the red metal tender. It also included two yellow flat cars that had very colorful cages with different colored plastic animals in them and tractor trailer or tractor semi tractors to pull them and a yellow New Haven passenger car with red lettering talking about this flyer set. It was called the circus set. Very unique. And, as if that was not enough, they also included a cardboard insert that had punch-outs where you could punch out a big tent and some other circus-related items. And the set, while being arguably one of the most colorful flyer ever produced, didn't seem to catch uh, on very well. And so it's a bit on the rare side. And uh, in Doyle's book, he has a, a scale of 1 to 8, with 8 being the most rare. He says that the circus engine has a rarity of seven. So a little over a year ago when I happened to be at a train show and uh, there was a box of broken junk on the floor and I saw a red die cast shell, uh, I paid attention. It caught my eye. So today we're going to take a look at how we got from a bunch of parts and pieces and missing parts and pieces to this restored engine and tender and uh, invite you to join me on that journey. If you stick around, you'll see the engine putting some laps in. And uh, as always, I appreciate your comments and your thoughts, your feedback. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Would love to have you join us here at Austin's American Flyer. So enjoy the show and until next time, God bless. Take care. Okay, so now I have full RPMs. Um, before, I was not getting full RPMs. It was running, I don't know, a fraction of, uh, fraction of full, full uh, potential. And uh, something about here is about all the speed I was getting out of it. And so, anyhow, um, so that's kind of a, a tip for those of you that uh, want to repair your engines. That's something to look for or look for. Um, a second tip, and I'm sure um, I'm, you've seen a couple videos where I talk about these reversing units, um, and I'm not alone. Um, they, they tend to, to be abused over time or neglected, and things will happen. And this one was in really bad shape, uh, very dirty, a lot of rust, and it's still it's working somewhat better now. It still doesn't want to, as you notice there, it was still not wanting to work as good as it should. Um, so what I will do is I'll take take these uh, fingers off and um, there's these, these pins that you need to gently twist, um, being very careful not to, not to snap them off because if you do, you're in big trouble. Um, but anyhow, pull those off, check for pitting in the ends of the fingers. Um, especially in these really older units, it's not not uncommon to have pinning, and then they don't they don't connect enough electricity to get your engine to work. Um, 
The other thing, and I've had this happen a couple times now, so I'm beginning to think, well, maybe it's just what happens and it's not me. Because I am sure, I was very, very careful on this particular uh, reversing unit, that when I put the fingers back on to not uh, put any sideways pressure, you know, as I was putting them back down over these posts, um, I'd try it a little bit. If there's any resistance at all, I'd pull it back off and I'd adjust the post some more. Anyhow, made sure it was all straight. And then what do you know? The, these, these little ends fit down over the post. They slid down very simply. Then I twisted things back up on the ends and um, started to do some tests on the engine. Um, and I was gaining enough confidence um, to actually put the shell back on and all the, the side gear. And <laughs> then it quit working. <laughs> of course, that's what happens, right? So... Um, I took everything back apart and I was kind of scratching my head a little bit and um, uh, kind of went straight for the E-unit because as I've mentioned, it can be the, the temperamental place where there are problems that arise. And sure enough, um, here, um, after I'd put it back together, after it was in the shell, <laughs> uh, the one end snapped off. And so it was able to move around and obviously if it moves, it's not gonna have good contact. And it doesn't take much for those little fingers to fall out, out of alignment with the drum underneath here. And, of course, then nothing works. So, uh, again, food for thought if you are repairing your own engines, um, flyer parts. Uh, you want to have a bunch of these around because uh, they do just very easily, especially once they get old. Uh, they tend to want to break pretty easily. And so that's a top tip from me in... Uh, Hopefully it will help those of you with your future repairs. Okay, before us is my uh, 353 circus engine. About 24 hours ago, I put um, this citrus strip on it um, with paintbrush. Just poured a little gel in there and spread it out, uh, painted it, if you will. And then I covered it with saran wrap and left it sit for 24 hours. As I pulled the saran wrap up, it pulled the paint off. <laughs> Here, I've dipped my uh, brush in a little bit of naphtha Well, I have just gotten done uh, roughing up and also cleaning up uh, the shell for my uh, 353 Circus. Um, after stripping the paint, I wanted to also um, go over the, 
that cast really well. Um, I am going to be using a uh, paint um, under undercoat paint that does, I believe, have a little bit of an etching primer quality to it, or a bit of a uh, acid in the paint. So uh, that should, in theory, stick very well. But uh, it doesn't hurt to have a really, really clean and prep surface, and um, so I want to do that. Now, what's interesting is as I clean this up really good, and maybe maybe this was standard, I don't know. Um, but look at look at these imperfections in the shell. Um, you've got some um, areas where the the metal just didn't come through real good, and then underneath that little window, there's actually a, a divot. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is um, use our friend JV Weld uh, to come in here and use that as a body filler and uh, just go ahead and try to fill this hole in here and then go over this area here and uh, sand that back down. Um, the other thing I thought, well, if I'm going, going this far, what would happen if I would try to maybe grind down this uh, seam a little bit. Um, am I going over the top? I don't know. What would happen if I had had a final product that in some ways was, was better than the original? Um, yeah, the paint's not original, but uh, <laughs> the, uh, the imperfections will be cleaned up a little bit. So that's kind of my thinking at this point. And, uh, and, and we'll just I'll keep you abreast of the progress.
This is one of the hardest things I've ever tried to do. Um, <laughs> messed up paint, had to come back with some red, then some yellow, and it still doesn't look very good, but uh, it's gonna have to be good enough. And my hat's off to those of you that are able to paint these ribs at the front of these uh, bullet nose and make them look good because <laughs> that is truly an accomplishment. 